The quantum era has already begun, according to Time Magazine in an article we're gonna go over in today's video. Also, Microsoft has posted a robust quantum blog post, which goes into some of the aspects of the previous Trump administration, security implications for quantum, and a host of other in the weeds detailed things about this quantum revolution that we're starting to see. So we're going to cover the Time Magazine post and we're going to cover the Microsoft blog article, which I think are both uh, an incredible, I think they're these articles paint a picture of where quantum is now. And there's definitely some urgency and also some great informational material in here. So if you like content like this, please consider leaving a like or subscribe if you haven't already. And let's jump right in. Okay. So according to this Time Magazine article, the quantum era has already begun a bold headline, and I think it's completely true. Let's see what Time Magazine has to say about the quantum era. So I've already gone in and highlighted a few of these just to make it easier for us to get through this content. So by the end of 2024, even casual observers of technology headlines could see the excitement building around quantum computing, a technology that represents a fundamental shift in how we process information, applying quantum physics to solve problems far beyond the reach of even the most powerful classical computers. So we know that there that this is the international year of quantum uh, and IBM, Microsoft, Boeing, all of these companies, uh, D-Wave, Rigetti, are all ion Q. All of these companies are announcing new contracts, research, breakthroughs. Um, we have big tech players like Microsoft, Amazon, and Google announcing their own quantum chips. There's a lot of money and research and thought being put into these to this next revolution of computing. So Time is saying in this article here, uh, kind of recapping um, how there was a lot of controversy when NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said that useful quantum computing wasn't for another 15 to 30 years. And a lot of the quantum stocks sold off at that point. A lot of people still believe we're three to five years out from true commercial viability for quantum computing. Um, Bill Gates, who gave this three to five year uh, projection. Now, um, time is saying here, there won't be a light bulb moment. So I think this is a good nuance that quantum computing is not like previous technological light bulb moments. Quantum computing evolution is less visible and more distributed. So it's going to kind of happen behind the scenes. Um, we're not going to see it like it's not going to, you're not going to walk into Best Buy, uh, like they say here, um, and buy a quantum computer. The transformation will happen behind the scenes embedded in the foundational systems of science, logistics, healthcare, and finance. Instead of a launch moment, it will come with performance breakthroughs, solve problems, and enduring value creation. So what that means is we're going to see small baby steps, baby leaps, big steps, small baby steps. And there's not just one runner in this race, right? We have so many companies that are putting money and time and research and effort. And not just in the U S we, we, on the international stage, we have, um, Europe and China, who's also spending a lot of money on quantum research. So this is a, um, exciting time, um, in, the field of science and for quantum computing. So then time goes on to say that the use cases are no longer theoretical. They are real world, commercially viable value creating initiatives in aerospace, energy, financial services, national security, quantum use cases are being developed, not as moonshots, but as competitive tools. And in some cases they are already up outpacing traditional approaches. So one miss from time 
is they didn't include D Wave's recent quantum supremacy uh, and in their quantum annealing technology. Because if we're going to be talking about commercial viability and value creating initiatives, I want specific examples. And D Wave currently is providing that value. If you define the start of the commercial era for a product as the moment the value creation has begun, that start date is already in the rearview mirror. Governments around the world are taking notice and funding these efforts. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, China, Germany, and the UK, the US, and South Korea lead the world in public investments in quantum. So for the naysayers, for those who say the time is not now, the time is not ever, it's it's very much at this point, it's not a question of if. Um, it's a question of when. And that when the the goalposts keep moving, right? So we had uh, uh, from one of the top three companies in the world, NVIDIA, right, uh, by market cap, the CEO saying this was 30 years away. And then a month later, we had m- pr- uh, former Microsoft CEO and multi-billionaire Bill Gates saying three to five years. And then we have quantum companies, quantum specialized companies like D-Wave that specialize in quantum annealing, which is one type of quantum computer that claim they are already providing commercial value to clients today. And they're working on both quantum annealing and quantum gate-based computers. So you can see how the goalposts keep moving. So now it's not a matter of if this is going to happen, it's when, and that when uh, continues to uh, accelerate. Quantum computing is not just a tool, it's a national capability. Countries that lead will attract talent, secure data, and define how this technology is regulated, protected, and deployed. Those that lag in investing in quantum computing may find themselves playing catch-up in cybersecurity, energy modeling, drug development, and defense applications. I've beat this to a pulp on this channel since I started it a couple months ago. And you're going to see that Microsoft and Time are both saying it now in their posts. They're they're saying exactly what I've been saying for months. If we lag, if we are the second mover or third mover, if we lose to China, if we lose to uh, other countries, um, then they are going to set the rules. They are going to set the frameworks. They are going to attract the talent and secure their data while potentially threatening our data. So a very nice article to see uh, this Saturday from Time. Actually, that was today. Um, Sunday um, from Time Magazine. Now let's jump over to the Microsoft blog post, investing in American leadership in quantum technology, the next frontier in innovation. So let's talk about Microsoft for a second. First of all, we just saw them crush earnings, okay? So Microsoft is doing very well as a company across the board. Look at all their products, uh, look at how they're monetizing their products and producing value uh, to shareholders. And increasing revenues and just they're an insane money making machine and and they have an established brand um, that is a household name now for decades now beyond that microsoft was one of the first movers after nvidia said 15 to 30 years away after jensen said uh quantum is 15 to 30 years away they are the ones that posted on their blog 2025 is the year to become quantum ready then a month later, give or take, they released their May Her 101 chip, which I'll talk about here um, in this article, uh, their, their quantum chip. So we have multi-trillion dollar companies pouring money into quantum. And let's see what Microsoft has to say about the state of quantum today. And they do also have some dire warnings, and we're going to cover all that. So AI has captured public imagination. It's transforming how we work, create, and navigate the world. But as AI carries the headlines, we are also on the cusp of another tech frontier, quantum computing. Long the domain of theory, quantum technologies are edging closer to reality with profound implications for the world and American national competitiveness and security. So that's something really to take into consideration is when you're talking about AI, you really can't leave quantum out of the conversation because quantum is going to enhance AI. We've already seen Ion Q in a recent headline that they've made breakthroughs on this front. Um, quantum and AI are going to work together. Um, 
we know that one of the big problems with AI currently is how much power it takes to run AI. We hear about the data centers and we hear about the guilt for running chat GPT because every time you do, it, it's uh, it's this huge um, energetic output is needed to, to run that. So we're going to need to find efficiencies and quantum seems like it's perfectly positioned to capture that. Quantum technologies harness the mysterious and powerful behaviors of particles at the atomic levels. And like AI, quantum computing is not only has the potential to transform entire sectors of our economy, but tackles previously insurmountable problems, opening pathways, science, medicine, tech, the possibilities for chemistry, drug discovery, materials, energy, agriculture, the list goes on and on. Microsoft's recent breakthrough adds to the breadth and pace of quantum science innovation. The development of our Meherwana 1 quantum chip leverages the unique properties of so-called so Meherwana quasi-particles. I struggle with that word. I think they could have cho chosen an easier word, but that's here nor there. Creating qubits that are more stable and less prone to decoherence. The Trump administration's long-standing leadership in quantum science. So this is an interesting, um, if we look at the kind of the political aspect of this, we see big companies um, are very cautious. We saw with Amazon um, when there were the was the headline about Amazon potentially uh, posting uh, the tariffs, right? Uh, alongside their prices, and then immediately the White House saying that's anti-American, that that this, this is being political, and Amazon walked it back. So Microsoft here is clearly showing kind of the respect, but also raising the alarm bell. So let's let's read what what they're saying here. So. Since the earliest days of quantum sciences, the U.S. has led research and development. While most believe the U.S. still holds the lead position, we cannot afford to rule out the possibility of a strategic surprise or that China may already be at parity with the United States. Simply put, the U.S. cannot afford to fall behind or worse, lose the race entirely. So that's what I've been saying um, and now you're hearing it directly from Microsoft and you're hearing it from Time Magazine. So last month, President Trump emphasized that actions during his first term established the foundation for national quantum supremacy and tasked new confirmed director Krasios to blaze a trail to the next frontiers of science. So then there's uh, a little bit of information here about the uh, history of tech, World War II. Um, American innovation. Uh, and then we go back to China. Okay. So since at least 2000, China has made quantum tech a cornerstone of its national technological strategy and has invested heavily to assert dominance in the quantum sciences. Over this time, China's public spending on overarching R&D has grown 16 fold, placing it second in the world behind the United States in total spending. It surpassed Japan in 2009 and combined R&D of the EU over a dozen years ago in 2000. So here's what Microsoft is saying. The scale and focus of China's efforts continue to accelerate. Last year alone, China announced a 10% increase in R&D with public reports indicating that China has increased government spending in quantum research to approximately $15 billion. Given these coordinated efforts in China, sustained American quantum leadership will require continuing support across the federal government coordinated in substantial part by OSTP. American strength rests in substantial part on three federal agencies, the DOD, DOE, and NSF. Each prong of this triad uniquely and collectively contributes to ensuring American technological superiority. He go on to explain why each of those of the triad three strategic actions to ensure American quantum leadership. Winning the quantum race will require us to deploy and reinvest in our greatest American strengths, our intellect, our curiosity, and our drive to innovate and build. So this is a really well-crafted message from Microsoft um, that has a wide appeal. It appeals to American exceptionalism. It identifies a problem and it outlines potential solutions. So Microsoft has shown exceptional leadership in the quantum conversation all year, and we just saw their stock explode 10% on amazing earnings. So what a 
we are very fortunate to have a company like Microsoft that is putting out messaging like this that is helping steer these larger conversations because we need these tech leaders, these multi-trillion dollar companies to provide that leadership. So what are they asking for? They're asking for increased funding for quantum research and development. They're asking to promote workforce and talent development. Winning the quantum race requires the world's best talent. And they're asking to ensure supply supply chain security for quantum technologies. And they go really in depth in here. Um, And I'm trying to keep this video to a reasonable length, but head over to uh, Microsoft's blog. I'll leave the link in the description of the video. Let's read this closing statement from Microsoft. At the start of his second term, President Trump signed an executive order to advance American leadership in AI. President Trump should now do the same with quantum by setting national priorities that support robust funding, promote a skilled workforce, and protect supply chain security through incentivized onshoring. Taken together, these actions will not only bolster our national security and competitive edge, but it will also drive innovation and economic growth at home towards a new frontier of American prosperity. So short story long, long story short, Microsoft and Time are saying, we need to do more. There is urgency and there are threats. I've been saying it for a while on this channel. Um, And also I really like how Microsoft is positioning quantum as a natural evolution and as a complement to artificial intelligence. Um, so really interesting to see the this news. Uh, I wanted to bring it all to you guys. What do you think about this? Do you think that we're in a period uh, of urgency? Um, do you think that the US is in trouble? Do you think we're actually ahead of the US in spending or in the technology? Um, to be honest with you all, my fear is we are not. We are second place right now, and that gap will grow unless we take immediate and decisive action, funding and prioritizing quantum research across the board. Okay, so that's all I got for you. I'll leave you on that light note, and we'll talk to you all soon.